Fashion and this is Prasanna Karthik from Spring Nectar TV. First of all, I would like to thank the viewers for showing so much love and support on our first episode. We are truly overwhelmed. Please continue your support which pushes us to give interesting content every time. This week's episode is going to be very interesting because I'm going to take you to the land of God's own country. Any guesses? Yes, Kerala it is. Mahatma Gandhi is a man who believed in simple dressing. When he went to Kerala in the 1930s, he said, the simplicity in the dressing of women in Kerala shows the innocence in their mind. Kerala has a fascinating tale. It has led from the front, breaking all the barriers, glass ceilings and conventional paradigms. Kerala, over centuries due to its geographical ecosphere and humid weather, had simple clothing, the traditional mundum neriyatum, in various forms that has restricted itself to traditional outings now. Think India and you think colours. When the rest of the world is known for their riot of colours and embroideries, Kerala stands apart in the fact that their traditional garments featured simple off-white cottons and plain gold borders. Unlike the rest of the country, Kerala has always shied away from unnecessary surface ornamentations and loud colours, opting instead for minimalism. Keralites were pioneers in natural fabric dyeing too. In a country full of myriad patterns and bold colours, Kerala's traditional kasavu sari stands out for its elegance and visual restraint. But beneath its simple appearance lies a cultural legacy and unique aesthetic. Enough said, how about we hear it from a person from Kerala? So in today's show, we have a Bharatanatyam dancer and a gorgeous woman from God's own country, Kerala. Let's welcome Sandhya. Hello Sandhya, welcome to the show. Hi Prasanna. Thank you so much for having me. For it's my pleasure to have you over and uh, I have a lot of interesting questions to ask you. Definitely. But first, can you introduce yourself to the viewers? Sure, of course. Uh, Namaskar everyone. I am Samya Nayar. I was uh, born in Kerala, Ernakulam and raised in Bangalore. We moved to Los Angeles after my marriage. Now I am a mother of three boys and we have a little addition, a little puppy named Amini Kuti. Passion, dance and music, they've always been close to my heart. I'm a classical dancer, I learned Bharatanatyam. Mm -hmm. uh, music, I'm not a great singer, but I love to sing, so I am learning Carnatic music. When it comes to my other likings, I love to cook. I cook for my family, friends, they come out, we hang out, we have fun. Pretty much we are good at it. Okay, that's wonderful. It's amazing to have a person with so much caliber to be part of the show. So, when you think about Kerala, the first mm -hmm. thing that comes to our mind is the off-white sari and the kasabu border, sure. right? So yeah, I picked one for myself for today's you look show. Very pretty. Yeah, you look not as pretty as you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, could you tell us the cultural legacy behind uh, the Kerala sari and the kasabu border? Sure, sure. So before we go to Kasava Sari, and uh, I wanted to just take a few steps back. So traditionally in Kerala, there was no concept of Sari at all. Okay. So men and women used to wear Mund. Okay. okay so Mund was basically a one-piece cloth which was worn waist downwards. Okay. In contrary, lots of places women were not allowed to wear upper garments. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. Um, later post-colonization, women started wearing Angavastra. Okay. So Angavastra is more like a half sari. Okay. But they used to not wear it in a sari form. Mm -hmm. So they used to have the mund and then this Angavastra used to be like a uh, wrap okay. over their upper body. Okay. And it stuck. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's where the two piece cloth transformed into set to mund. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think I've seen some paintings. So if you are an art lover, you would love to watch the painting of Raja Rani Varma painting. Right. Okay? So you should look at those paintings and these beautifully portrayed uh, Nair women, mm -hmm. how they look. You should watch yeah, it. Okay? Yeah. Then that's where the single piece sari concept, the kasava sari came later. Later, okay. Yes, yeah. So again, now kasava, I have to say what is a kasava. Okay? Yes. Kasava is basically a border uh -huh. to a fabric. 
Okay. So we say kasavi manjara maskara. Okay. So if it's a fabric, it's woven to the fabric. Mm -hmm. So that is what mainly kasava is. Mm -hmm. There is a history for how kasava was introduced in Kerala. Okay. Uh, it's believed back in 19th century, there was this king called Bhadra Okay. He and his minister invited weavers okay. from a community called Shaliyars. Mm -hmm. the Shaliyar weavers from uh, Nagarkoil in Tamil Nadu. Mm -hmm. They were offered a place in, uh, in King's Kingdom. Mm -hmm. okay? And uh, in return, the gratitude the weavers gave was stitching garments for the uh, royals okay. of Travancore. Okay, that's yeah. interesting. So, uh, so I think um, during the barter system, uh, there was this exchange of spices and gold. Okay, so that's when the upper class women and the royals found that as an opportunity to uh, build the castle, or uh, sorry, the gold into the cloth. Mm -hmm. So that is how they started uh, uh, incorporating castle into the side. Okay, that's interesting yeah. to know. Yeah. Yeah. So. So yes, is it something like this? Is this a Kerala sari? Would you would you uh, say? <laughs> uh, I wouldn't really say this is a Kerala sari. Okay. Uh, I know it's, it's more like a Pattu sari, but you have a combination of the Kerala yeah. sari combination, which is the off white and gold. Right. Uh, I think you, a lot. You look pretty, though, Prasanna. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so it's good. Argument. Coming from you, I'm really honored. <laughs> And I, I should say that a lot of people who are not Malayalis, they now own a Kerala sari very proudly. Yes, yes, yes. Mostly it's because of the Bollywood take on Kerala sari films like Aisha. Oh really? The sari oh, okay. you know, to a national mm. mileage. Yeah. But overall I think um, Kerala sari as such uh, is very simple and very elegant mm -hmm. looking. You know, and yes. like, Maybe one should be having that in their wardrobe, at least one, one Kerala sari. Yeah, behind all the simplicity, the elegance and the demand for the Kerala sari, there must be a lot of hard work, right, behind the scenes. So, can you tell us, like, how long does the weaver take to weave a Kerala sari? So, traditional saris like Kerala sari, Sechamundar, it's called Kaitari. So, Kaitari is nothing but a, a handloom. Okay. It's a process where it's manually looped. Okay. okay. I've heard that in a general process of making uh, or weaving a sari takes about three to five days, and that's again for only for a very plain sari. Okay. Uh, if it is for a bridal collection, then it would go for about okay. a month or so. Okay. Yeah. And what would be the price range for these sarees? There are price variations a layman can afford, and it goes all the way up. So maybe it can range from five hundred. 500 rupees. Okay. It, too, it can go more than a lakh. 500 rupees, that's really, you know, underpriced for the amount of labor that goes into uh, it. Yeah. Yes, I mean, it is, it is true. When we go to this handloom industry in Kerala in Badranapuram, you should see how the manual labor and the manual process that takes for the sari that one day that we wear, the amount of effort. Uh, they purchase, yeah, uh, it's humongous. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I pay respect for. Yeah. And those weavers. Yes, weavers. that's right. Yes. Yeah. That's nice. Sandhya, what are the design elements behind these sarees? Uh, are they minimalistic or the viewers go wild with their imagination and you know make patterns and designs? So you know how Kerala sari looks like. Right? Yeah. This is not something like it's worn uh, for a particular thing. So Septimund is basically an everyday use wear in okay. Kerala. Okay. So back in ages, they used to identify girls based on the color of the blouse. So if it's a spinster, if it's a spinster girl, they usually have a green blouse. Wow. Okay. I was going to wear green blouse today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and okay, now comes the part that I'm going to say the red. Ah. Okay, so red is for the Middle East mothers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. That's how you identify girls in those ages. Okay. Yeah. That's something that I got to know about it. Recently. Okay, that's that's interesting. Yeah, yeah but to answer your point, Kerala, Kerala attire predominantly a whole part is mainly the body. Okay. Okay, so which is always a plain, right? So mm -hmm. it's very minimal. So the design element that comes into the picture is only the border. Ah. So if it is for a wedding, then it is shown as a bigger castle. Okay. Okay. Bigger border. Yeah, bigger mm -hmm. border. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the luxury part of the product. Okay. But you want to be part of a funeral, mm -hmm. and there wouldn't be a castle to that. Okay. Castle, be plain white. It's a plain white. Okay. So off white with no border. Okay. Okay. Yes. So, what are the special occasions that you wear either the Kerala sari or the Mundu set? 
So there is no special occasions like any of the festival times. Okay. Okay. So um, be it a New Year celebration or Onam mm. or Vishu, mm. you know, uh, or a wedding. Many marriage events. We normally Keralaites prefer going for Kerala side. Kerala side. Yeah. I must tell you that I'm eyeing on your outfit for a very long time, <laughs> and uh, I need to ask you what you're wearing. So could you throw us some light on what you're wearing today and other traditional outfits that are worn in Kerala? Sure, Prasanna. So what I am wearing today is a set to move. Well, like I told you some time back, it's a two piece. Okay. So you see me that I'm wearing the mundu part, which okay. is the waist down, uh -huh. and then I have the uh, top half. The top sari. half sari. Okay. Yeah. So now you see the border. Mm -hmm. So this is a kasava. Okay. So this is a fabric where the thread is woven and it's a kasava mundu. Okay. You know? Something that I want to talk about is this, this set to mundu. Actually, the weaving process is okay. actually from Malinamapura. In Kerala, there are three main kasava production clusters. Okay. Okay. So one is Balajamapuram, mm. uh, Chendamangalam, mm. and Kuttanpalli. Okay. So I got this from the Balajamapuram, mm -hmm. uh, and Balajamapuram is one of the finest producing of kasava sarees. What's the finest part of that is you notice this, right? Mm -hmm. The way they weave, it is very identical on both the sides. You really cannot make out. There is nothing. You can wear it either so way. It is such a beautiful way, and it's amazing. But unfortunately, Balajamapuram is actually. Losing its legacy now. And nobody wants to learn that skill. So the upcoming youngsters, they don't want to follow their parents' footsteps mm. because it's a long manual art. And, and they earn very little. Yeah, so. low wages. This legacy will yeah. be soon. And yeah. from what I read, I think there's only one person who's doing the thang. Mm. You know, there is something called uh, kuritara and kaitari. Mm -hmm. So kuritara is something like weaving process is different. Okay. Okay, so that's pretty much coming to an end. Is what they're saying. Oh. So kaitara, there is a power loom that's continuing but I should say that uh, when designers around the world are uh, racking their brains over the next big trend in sustainability I think uh, you guys have already made it because this the humble Septamunda is a classic example of zero waste because there's no thread wasted there's yes. no fabric wasted there is no pattern cuttings or fabric manipulation yes, yes. I think you guys have already you know <laughs> set the bars high <laughs> Now, I'm going to take you back in time. We are going to talk about your wedding. <laughs> so usually Kerala weddings are conventionally, you blink and you miss kind of wedding affairs, right? In terms of the gold jewelry, because Kerala is also called as the land of gold. Okay. So I'm curious to know what was your wedding like in terms of uh, jewelry and outfit? My wedding, again, you know, I think when it comes to Kerala sari. Uh, concept. They usually wear at the time of tying the knot. Mm -hmm. Now, nowadays we have a different uh, sarees for a different uh, occasions, right? Yeah. So for a wedding, it is more like for tying the knot. Usually, we want to keep the traditional uh, the aspect. The sari. Yeah. yeah. Again, in Kerala, different uh, regions, the marriage uh, style is different. Okay. So in my wedding, personally, I, I never wore a septamundi. Uh -huh. So my wedding happened in Guruvayur. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, for me in our ritual, it's our ritual that we wear a septum on the it's like a gift that a bridegroom gives us during an exchange mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, after the wedding knot is tied. Okay? So the ritual follows, uh, the bride ties the knot, then we exchange garland and then the bridegroom actually gives us the Padova Kudukal. Mm. Okay, so that is, you give the sari. Yeah, so okay. in the Padova Kudukal, there is two saris that's kept. Mm. So one of them is the uh, Settimunda. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So, so this is actually my wedding Settimunda. Sure, so it was, yeah. Yes. Uh, it's Karalkada. Okay. So Karalkada brings all its Kasava saris and Settimunda from Baradam Rivers. Okay. Look at the beauty. It's been so many years now and we still haven't used it. Yeah. The beauty of this. I don't know how do I say this. We call it as an original kasava. Okay. It's, it's the original zari, right? Yes. Yeah. It's more of an original weavers. It's a handloom. Handloom. Yeah. It's manually done by the weavers and we bought it from there. Okay. Yeah. It's a more of a traditional wear. Wow. That's nice. Yeah. When it comes to jewelry. Wow. Yeah. Jewelry you have a lot. <laughs> Yeah, but I wanted to show you some of the traditional Kerala ornaments. Okay. So I brought today, so I just thought probably it will give you a little bit of idea what yeah, yeah. traditional. So this one, it's called Putali. Okay. Okay, so this is like a choker. Okay. That goes around your neck. Okay. Okay, it goes like that. Okay. Yeah, so this is one. And I have this one, 
which is called the palakya. Palakya. Yeah. Okay. This is like a green stone. Hmm. It's very pretty. pretty. Yeah. It's very mm -hmm. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So if you see that, you know, see. So so you see that. Wow, that's very nice. Yeah. yeah, very elegant. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. very beautiful. It's one of the, these are all like traditional, traditional jewelry. And yeah. you should have seen this. Most of our dancers. Yes, Kashmana. Uh, yeah. Kashmana. So yeah. we usually wear Kashm. Kashmana is another traditional jewelry. Yeah. Yeah. So Kasu means coin basically. Coin. So it's uh, made of like a lot of coins stringed together. It's called Kasu Mala. Mala yes. is chain. So yeah. Yeah. So that's another one. This is money mala. Money mala. Okay. Money. So money is beads. Beads. Yeah. So okay, th you should have seen this one. Too. Yes, this is very popular, right? Yeah. yeah. It's called elakatali. Elakatali. Okay. Yeah. This yeah. is again a choker. Yeah, it's a choker. Wow. Yes. Yeah. It's very glittery. <laughs> so you. So this is a small version of. It's called padakam. Mm -hmm. So it's like a string with one single. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one pendant. It's like a chocolate. Okay. So one pendant can okay. Be okay. Let's see, you wear this. Okay. Yeah. Something similar. Uh, something similar to. Uh, mm -hmm. Something similar. I'm not sure. This is one, some, one of a designer wear. Mm -hmm. yeah, so you can wear it. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty. Okay. Uh, what is this? This so is. Uh, that's a uh, mulla mutte. Okay. So you know the mulla, the jasmine, ah, jasmine the buds, flower, the yeah. buds. Wow, uh -huh. look at this! How pretty is that? Yeah, isn't that beautiful? This. Yeah, yeah. So and what nice. is this grand piece? Of <laughs> it's another uh, traditional ornament, uh, uh, manga mala. Oh, we have that in South India, Tamil Nadu too, manga yeah. mala. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's in the shape of a mango. Mango, yes, yeah. yeah. And I think you also have this one too, right? It's karimani, karimani. Karimani, yes, yeah. yeah. Actually, I've been to few Malayali weddings, so I know what you mean. So it's amazing, and above all, the simplicity of the bride. You know, uh -huh. the very simplicity, the white off-white sari and the gold jewelry. I think the very simplicity very beautiful, is uh, what I'm makes uh, the Kerala sari and khan look very special. I think. Yes, yes. To any Malayali for that matter. Yes, yeah. I have a very important question to ask you. So I know Kerala is very strict when it comes to dress code between religious places and temples, and I immensely respect that. I have a question: like, does these social norms impose fashion restrictions with the general population, or the fashion scene is easing up a bit? Yes, okay. very, very much. Uh, I would say definitely there is an influence of our traditions that we've been carrying. From ages. Okay. So when we when we go to temple, we have a tradition that we think uh, dress etiquette that we always have followed. Yes. Uh, apart from that, if you see in a practical approach, if you see the Kerala clothing is cotton, mm -hmm. right? And Kerala being a city, it's very hot. Yes. So uh, a comfortable clothing is always is what we look for. Yes. And the Kerala cotton is always it's kind of adhering to that. Right. So that's one thing that's impacted. That also influences. I think nowadays youngsters are kind of easing up it. Mm. Uh, they do wear the tradition mm. outfits. They're also uh, incorporating modern outfits too. Okay, yeah. that's nice. Yeah. yeah. I, I think they're experimenting with fashion because when I did my research, I found that there's so many young fashion designers mm -hmm. from Kerala like uh, Shalini James, uh, Manju Lakshmi, uh, Reshma Nanu and uh, Purnima Indrajit. They've all yes. made their mark internationally, uh, also staying true to their roots. Yes. Uh, the ethnic, of, yeah. yeah. The ethnic touch of our Kerala fashion. Right. Yeah, so that, so that fashion is always maintained. So how are the youth experimenting with fashion? So like you, you spoke about these uh, designers, right? Mm -hmm. If you look at their collections, I mean, you, you should, it, it's, a, it's a very nice combination that uh, it, it, that look that we get, they're still keeping the tradition touch. Yes. You know, and maintaining everything that what we needed, but yet giving a little bit of that sophisticated element yes. to it. Yeah. You know, they have this crop top with a beautiful uh, anatomy kind of a skirt. Mm. So I think they are, they are experimenting and I think in, in a good way, in a good sense. Yeah. Onam is a very popular festival in Kerala. Yes. And uh, I love the Onam Sadhya and I love watching you all dance around the lamp decorated with flowers. So if one must go to Onam celebration and must dress up for Onam celebration, what are the different ways one can dress up in addition to the off-white side? I'm a traditional person. 
So I would like to stick with tradition. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so keeping that apart, I think Kerala sari is so versatile that we can style it in many ways. Okay. Interesting is the regular blouse. Now it's paved way to many designer blouses. Yeah. Now there are a lot of uh, sleeveless. Um, boat necks. Mm -hmm. You know, so the importance is given to the designer blouse. Mm -hmm. So blouse becomes the more of an attractive piece. So maybe you will have a regular set to kasu sari. There's another styling of very beautiful designer blouse. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then it, it elevates your sari. Right. You do it in the North Indian style too. Mm -hmm. The Gujarati fashion. And yeah. They don't drape it all the way. Okay. So they keep it like a long blouse with. Uh, uh, the dupatta flowing. Yes. Okay. Yes. So yeah, so the the palu part will be kind of like yeah, yeah. okay. So you paint it and so that's one thing that I have seen. Okay. Um, and then there's I've seen uh, off white anarkalis. Yes. The half saris. So when it comes to the salwar and kurtis, mm. so you see they they have their own collections of pretty much in a similar fashion, but the patterns are different. Okay. Yeah, anarkalis is like those white skirts, mm. you know, and then skirts are white. Then you have this nice crop blouse. So yes. The way they then they look more beautiful mm. than those young girls. Yes. Yeah, I think one of them I just got this. Mm -hmm. So this is a very beautiful uh, skirt. Okay. Okay. So this is a skirt and mm. this is a crop. Blouse. Then there's a tissue silk. Mm, that's so, very pretty. Yeah. Even young teens can wear this, yeah, right? Yeah, this is for the young. And this is like for little mm. girls. Mm. So this is one of the traditional cl clothing, like how do you say, Pattu Pavada. Right. Yeah. So for in the same similar fashion, in similar kasava sari. Okay. The kasava uh, set to mode kind of. Okay. The yeah. traditional yeah. Kerala costume. That's pretty. Okay, so I want to ask you, do you have any outfit or jewelry that you treasure the most? Yes. Yes, the one that I'm wearing right now. Okay. Uh, this is a very much uh, uh, passed down from generation. Okay. Uh, so uh, it was passed from my grandma's mom uh -huh. to my grandma, from my grandma to my mother, and then she gave this to me for my wedding. Wow. So okay. I love this piece. Yeah, it's very pretty. Yeah. So it's like the droplets, right? Yeah. It, we just call it elakatali. Uh huh. It's something like, but it is not really elakatali, but. It's a very simple version of that. Okay. So I, I really treasure this a lot. That's nice. Yes. Now the thing that I have, I'm more into the traditional jewelry. Mm -hmm. so this is something that's very really traditional. Okay. It's a very old fashioned mm. jewelry. This one came from my mother-in-law. Okay. So I love this. Okay. So I, I just, and of course I have another one. Okay. Um, when I got my, when once I started working, mm -hmm. I got this. Uh, from my salary. <laughs> wow! Look at her! I like it. I wore it for my wedding. So, nice! Yeah. Nice! So, That's yeah. wonderful. Awesome! So thank you so much and yeah, come to the end of the show and it was lovely chatting with you and I learned a lot about Kerala's cultural fashion. So thank you so much for being part of the show. Hey Prasanna, thank you so much. I think we I had a real good time with you. I hope this did not feed a lot of information. No, no, it was very good, very informative. Uh, I hope it helped you all. This is Prasanna signing off and I'll meet you all in yet another interesting episode with yet another interesting guest. I hope you all enjoyed the show just like we did. Please subscribe to Spring Nectar TV on Roku and show us some love. Until then, stay safe and stay classy.